Hello friends of Oak Hills, this is Pastor Dale with our weekly video touch point. Today is Thursday, September 14, 2023. For our points to ponder article, I have an article titled, Sin is Dissatisfaction. In our sermon series on Ephesians, we come to Paul's exhortations related to the 7th and 10th commandments this week. We have noted that as Paul gives his ethical teaching, he circles back to the 10 commandments. He touched on the ninth commandment in chapter 4, verse 25, the sixth commandment in 4, 26 and 27, and the eighth commandment in 4, 28. He will address the fifth commandment in chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. In Ephesians, Paul touches on every commandment of what is commonly known as the second table of the Ten Commandments. The first table is the first four commandments that focus on our relationship with God. The second table, which includes the last six commandments, focuses on our relationship with one another. All of this goes to demonstrate the unity of the Bible. God is the same in the Old Testament as in the New Testament. God's obligations for his people are the same in both the Old and New Testaments, and the way of salvation remains the same in both the Old and New Testaments. Today, I want to highlight something I find striking about how Paul addresses the 7th and 10th commandments. Consider Paul's words from Ephesians 5, verse 3 and 5. He writes, But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. What I find striking is that Paul lumps together almost in the same breath both sins, the sin of sexual immorality and covetousness. Is he running out of time and space and wants to hurry along in his ethical teaching? I don't find that to be likely. Paul is about to give some of his most in-depth teaching on marriage in Ephesians 5. I believe the only explanation is that Paul understands that there is a commonality that links the sins of sexual immorality, and covetousness. The common link between these two sins is dissatisfaction, namely, dissatisfaction with God. God is the one who has designed and created human sexuality for the purposes of procreation of children and the mutual enjoyment of one man and one woman in the covenant bond of marriage. Any engagement of sexual activity outside of God's design, reveals a dissatisfaction with God's intentions. On the other hand, our allotment in life, which includes the number of our days, our family heritage, our gifts, talents, and abilities, and even our financial state, is all provided by God. Covetousness, the desire for more than what we have, is a dissatisfaction with what God has given us. In fact, we can say all sin is a dissatisfaction with God. At some level, in every sin, we reject God and his ways in order to create our own path. This is why Paul inserts in Ephesians 5.5 5, the phrase that the ESV puts in parentheses. It says, that is an idolater. Paul is equating idolatry with these sins. He says, sexual immoral, immoral and covetous people are idolaters because they elevate themselves, their desires, and other things to be greater than God. The fight of faith is a fight to remain satisfied with God, his provisions, and his ways. In light of this, the psalmist prays in Psalm 90 verse 14, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Sin is deceitful. Sin makes promises, promises to satisfy. But those promises are all empty. May the truth of God's goodness guard our hearts and our minds in full satisfaction with Christ. This, my friends, is the core issue for our struggle against sin and for our endurance of faith in Christ. 
Just a few highlights to touch on this week in the life of Oak Hills. First, as always, we want to remind you our missionaries of the month. This month, John and Jessica Cropsey, they serve with Surge in Rwanda. John is an ophthalmologist, and uh, he is training other ophthalmologists that will go out across Africa and serve people in Africa, and then also bring the hope of Christ to these people that they are serving through these medical procedures. They share of a, a doctor, Dr. Tony, who has already traveled into East Congo, providing medical services, ophthalmology services to people, and and they are excited about that outreach and that ministry, and they're praying for, and we invite us to be praying for further provision so that Dr. Tony can continue that outreach ministry in, in the, these regions of Africa. So it's a, it's a fascinating ministry for us to partner with, to be praying for. And uh, there's obviously more information in your Touchpoint email. I encourage you to check that out. We want to remind you that Sunday School has restarted this last Sunday. And we encourage you to come and be plugged into our Sunday School hour at 930 on Sunday mornings. Uh, we have classes for our children and youth. And then I am teaching our adult Christian education class on desiring scripture. We're exploring uh, different methods and guidance that help us enjoy scripture for all that it's worth. It's something that I'm passionate about. I'm, I'm excited to be sharing with. So I'd love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 930. Looking ahead, we have a church work day on Saturday, September 23rd. We do this a couple times each year. It's a way for the, the church family to come together and do physical labor on the building, on our grounds, uh, to spruce it up, to continue to maintain our building. We'd love for you to be a part of that. Plan that, that day, Saturday 20, the 23rd, to join us. We have projects inside and outside, uh, yard work to minor construction projects, main, uh, updates in the building. So there's something for everyone. We'd love for you to be a part of that. And we are doing that on September 23rd in preparation for we are hosting Oak, uh, the Heartland Presbytery on September 29th and 30th. Our presbytery meets three times a year, and various churches in our presbytery host these meetings, and it's our turn to host it this fall. And it's uh, worship on Friday night with a business meeting starting Friday night, and then business continues on Saturday morning. You're welcome to attend. If you're curious about Presbyterianism and uh, how it works as we relate and interact with our sister congregations in our Presbytery, but we also serve and uh, and have hospitality for our brothers in the Presbytery. So we have snacks on Friday afternoon, dinner on Friday night, breakfast on Saturday morning, and we are asking our congregation that to help come up, come together in sh sharing this hospitality and serving these people. So we are looking for. Uh, side dishes and desserts for Friday night to, to fill out our meal. We have already several men committed to smoking meat to provide the main dish on Friday night for the dinner, but side dishes to go along with that smoked meat, barbecue meat, and desserts. And then on Saturday morning, we are looking for several breakfast casseroles or cinnamon rolls or other danishes if you would like to provide that. So you could speak with me or or Michael Buckley. We are the two coordinating the, these efforts, and and just let us know if you are willing and able to contribute to the, these meals and, and help us in in hosting Presbytery. Well, we look forward to that, and it's going to be a great uh, great weekend. And like I said, you are welcome to attend, especially on worship for worship on Friday night, on at seven p.m. Brian Chapel is going to be with us. He'll be preaching in that worship service, so it's a, a great opportunity to hear him. He's the former president of Covenant Seminary and now the current stated clerk of our denomination. Uh, it's always great to hear from Brian Chapel. I'd love for you to be a, be there for that worship service. That concludes our, our touch point for today. I look forward to being with you in worship on Sunday morning and uh, at Sunday school. God bless.